Guys, welcome in our co-hosts on this wonderful Wednesday, the Admiral Bill Stubblefield. William. Good morning, Rob. Wonderful day, except I had to fight through swarms of mosquitoes to get in my car. They're they're vicious this year. Out at the Stubblefield compound, there at were the, mosquitoes? At the ca- compound with alligators, yes. The security didn't take care of those? <laughs> the uh, alligators do not like mosquitoes, evidently. Well, let's get to work on that. I'm sorry you were already annoyed when you walked out of the house. No, no, not <laughs> no, no, today. I, this is, you walk in the studio, and it's all grins and smiles and... Happy to, happy talk. There must have been a different host here. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let's uh, welcome in uh, uh, Maria Lawrenson as well. Maria, good morning to you. Good morning. Happy to be here. Always happy to be here with uh, with Bill and Rob and our guests, of course. Yeah, yeah. But she says the nicest things, Rob, <laughs> <laughs> because she's a nice no, person. No, because on the seventeenth she's got a big fundraiser. Coming. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> she's not annoying anybody today. I, if she, I am not. One if she's going to say, y'all come, y'all come. No, 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 no. <laughs> Have you sold if out? If you're registered. Oh, yeah. And all We're, sold out? And, and then some. And then some. Marie's so. challenge now is finding a seat for everybody. Finding a seat for everybody. It's That's like, right. like a wedding reception, which she's also right now doing. Yeah. I'm doing yeah. that, too. Yeah. yeah. It's you, all good. Have you been to Vegas for your party there? Or yes. Or back? Yes. I've been there and back and had an absolute blast. Good. My sons leave tomorrow for my son's bachelor party, which is in Las Vegas. Okay. Where are they staying? Do uh, you know? They rented a house somewhere ah, outside of Las Vegas. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Uh, my bachelor party was in the city of Pittsburgh in like some union hall somewhere. I don't, I don't know where it was. It was... You, you and your drinking buddies. My, well, uh, my I, all my, oh, my dad was there. All my yeah, uncles. Yeah, they sat there playing pinochle. All That's night what long. they did. Um, <laughs> uh, I was pulling out some some wedding pictures because we're going to have a table, whatever. And the um, it is actually my fortieth wedding anniversary. The weekend that they oh, that my nice. daughter gets married, and we our reception. You'll appreciate this. Was at the Slovenian International Party House. Of course. Absolutely, so, yeah. Yeah, we had 300 people packed in there. It was fine. It was like Rodney Dangerfield yeah. all over. My, we had my, a great time. Mine in Pittsburgh was at the Mona Lisa. There you go. <laughs> the Itali- Italian banquet hall. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. It's what you do. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> our guest in this segment <laughs> is uh, nothing to do with any of our uh, things we talked about. Thank yeah. goodness. Yeah. Uh, Barbara <laughs> Fuller, she is running in the 98th the House of Delegates seat, a Republican in the primary. This is the seat currently held by Delegate Paul Espinosa, who is uh, re- uh, effectively renouncing the seat at the end of this term and running for Senate, where he's challenging the incumbent there, Patricia Rucker. Paul will be on the program at 9 this morning. Barbara, good morning. Thanks for coming in. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, you uh, last spoke with us, I believe, at our candidate forum. I did. Right. I uh, did. Uh, how did you think you did when you went back and watched it and as you went through it? I did. I went back and I saw areas that I needed to improve on. I uh, didn't really pay too much uh, attention to um, my speaking because I really needed to focus on getting out and talking with constituents. Um, So I tried not to uh, overthink, Mm -hmm. and I have just been knocking on doors crazy. How many doors? What percentage of the of the doors in the uh, electorate have you knocked on? So I have a thousand rack cards that I had ordered, and I believe I have like two hundred and fifty left. So you've been busy. I have been busy. Yeah, uh, as you've knocked on doors in Jefferson County, what has been the predominant issue people yeah. have brought to your attention? Um, solar. Uh, that is a huge issue. Um, they are not really a fan of it. They want to know what I can do. Um, if I'm elected, I explain to them, well, I can't necessarily change Jefferson County's ordinances, but I could certainly work on legislation down in Charleston that would at least address the, the, um, the, my, uh, the remediation. I think that is what is the, the end game is that people are afraid of what's going to happen when those solar uh, farms are no longer viable. So it's not just the view, which it's not the prettiest view a person has ever seen as they're going through the rolling hills of Jefferson County. It's it's not just the view, it's not just the remediation. The um, it's it's the, the possibility that there could be um, toxic chemicals that are leaching into the groundwaters, um, the Would you farms. Explain that, please. Yeah, sure. Because that's on your Facebook. The toxic chemicals, and yeah. I'm not, not aware of that. So, 
the panels themselves, at least the, the larger ones, not the ones on the homes, because those are built differently. They have smaller containment. Why I know this, I have no idea. <laughs> um, but the ones that are on the ground in the solar compounds have um, their bigger uh, areas um, that hold the lithium or the uh, the different chemicals, and they now escape me, but they're, they're toxic chemicals that... Uh, that are in the panels themselves. Are they are they a danger at the current time, or only after the panels have been torn down and been recycled? So my my thought process is that if the panels are whole, and they are not damaged, they should be okay. Um, we have seen in Texas where a hailstorm has come in and damaged and broke the panels, and then they would leak. We've seen, um, at least I've done research, where um, when the panels are, are flat, uh, facing the sky, birds believe that they are bodies of water because they just they reflect the blue, and birds that are migrating, such as ducks, geese, whatever, are, tend to fly into them. And, you know, you have a 10-pound bird or a 15 pound bird you know nose diving into what they think is water it's going to break the panels but you said flat i don't think many of them are flat all of them to get the full benefit of the sun they're at some angle so a lot of them move and when the sun is directly above they'll be flat well, I'd I, I like to come. I'll come back to this later, uh, Rob. But go right. Ahead. Excuse me. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And uh, outside of solar, what's the next biggest concern in Jefferson County? They want their delegates to address uh, taxes. Taxes is is a big one. Especially what kind of taxes? Property taxes. Um, a lot of them uh, feel. But is, is that the delegates' responsibility, or isn't it more at the county commission level? Well, it's 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 the tax issue. Um, the county commission cannot. Uh, get rid of property taxes and i'm talking about more or less personal property taxes uh, on your vehicles oh well, that's that's something you can blame the voters for when you <laughs> knock on their door they voted against it true and i've always had the opinion that if they had put um single issues and not jumbled four of them together your voters who did not and this is what's been told to me mm -hmm. they said that when they read all about the bills I mean about the uh, the the different resolutions they said oh I like this one like this one not crazy about this one not crazy about that one they get to the voter block and they're like oh which one did I like and what they did was they voted against them all because they could not justify which ones that they or remember which ones that they had wanted to vote against um, and I've always said, I said, you know, this is something that you should have either one at a time, two at a time, but when you jam four down, it, it's going to muddy the waters. A lot of people cited that. Uh, I, I don't know if I'd buy that. I'd be, there's probably some truth to it or not. Uh, some of it could be wording as well. I've voted on things at the ballot when you read them and you're not really sure what you're voting for or against. Sometimes that wording has a lot to do with it, Maria. Well, I was just going to comment that the excess levy on the ballot this time for Berkeley County Schools, it's an entire page. And, you know, most people sort of have a sense of if they're going to go yay or nay um, on that. But, you know, we'd all be in the ballot box for a significant amount of time if if you're just looking at it and reading the whole thing when you're in there so it can be a lot I, to digest it is it is but you hope that people are very well educated that they never vote on something that they don't truly understand you but know, you know you're dreaming I, do, I, know, <laughs> I know i know what they've heard or there's a discussion on our facebook page about the mailers and boy if you were just voting based on what you get in your mailbox every night Whew. um but yeah i think that you know that people bear a certain sense of responsibility to educate themselves now whether they do or not mm, 
Not, I, I'm not for sure on all that. Well, so. you know, a lot of people say the voters are smart. Let them decide. And then you let them decide. And then we make excuses as to why the voters didn't vote uh, yeah. the way they voted because True. we confused True. them with four amendments. So, True. You know, there's, there's, you can't play both sides of that. Go ahead, Maria. Well, um, so let's change uh, tactics a little bit, Barbara. Sure. You talked about solar. Talk about taxes. So the person who has held the seat um, for a number of years, Delegate Espinosa, um, very focused on business, um, uh, getting business to West Virginia. Um, I went to a, a, an open house last night for um, the new water um, group that has come in. So talk a little bit about if that will be your continued path or um, what you want to focus on. Oh, for as sure. A so uh, I have... Um actually worked with uh, Paul on his campaigns. Uh, we've done door knocking for him. Uh, my daughter has promoted him when she was in high school. Uh, so I'm very familiar to uh, Paul's work. Uh, my son worked for Rockwell. Um, and I believe that Jefferson County could be the, um, the be all and end all and the crowning jewel of West Virginia as far as businesses, not just, um, you know, Rockwell type businesses, factories, um, but we have the ability to um, get into agro-tourism and uh, wineries and all of those uh, neat things that will bring uh, a lot of money to Jefferson County. And I look forward to the day that the Hilltop House opens because that will... Someday. That will, <laughs> yeah, it, very true. But it will uh, enable uh, more, more dollars into the county and it will bring more people. And if you're going to bring more people, you have to have more stuff for them to do. And um, I would love to see uh, the uh, polo grounds uh, get bigger. I would love to see um, equine uh, eventing centers. Um, it's a that is a a huge thing. Well, at least it is in in my family. We love going to uh, equine, uh, whether it's cross country or or just Grand Prix jumping. We love it. Um, Do you compete in it at all? So no, um, my I <laughs> I've ridden, um, but where I summered uh, during my youth is a huge um, uh, a huge competition. It's called the Hampton Classic. And I think from the time I was five until I no longer had uh, easy access to Long Island, um, we would go every year and my friends rode and, and fun stuff. I was into tennis, mm -hmm. you know, not horses as much. Yeah, you made a disparaging face when you said you were into tennis. You're <laughs> no, into I, tennis. Lo I love tennis. Um, I, I, you, and, you and Patrick Morrissey. I had no idea he played tennis. He, he refereed professional tennis matches when he was uh, no idea. summers to make money to stay in law school. In interesting. Yeah, big big names too, like yeah. the biggest names. Yeah, um, I I played all throughout high school and singles doubles mm -hmm. and i used to um we belonged to a country club or a beach club and i used to teach the little kids you know like the five-year-olds demonstrate your backhand on bill <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so i have he doesn't a, deserve it yeah i have a two-handed backhand oh yeah and, that'll get him good and it Ooh. is it it is it's a little powerful and it's got a, a huge spin on it so Bill, you don't mind, do you? <laughs> not at all, not at all. A Chris Everett type of a, a two-hand backhand. But let's go back to the question and issue just a second. Uh, you mentioned you'd like to see Jefferson County, it, Jefferson County has potential of becoming the economic mecca of the state, or words that affect. Yet the history of Jefferson County argues just the opposite. You mentioned Rockwall. Rock, they push back hard on Rockwall. They're pushing back hard on solar panels. They they were pushing back hard on the pilot programs, which all the, all the counties in the state use to bring business in. Uh, all of these things would be, would give a, a potential business coming into Jefferson County uh, pause for thought. So how would you, how are you going to reverse your history and say all of a sudden we welcome business? So I think a lot of times um, 
the pilot programs are given because we have that horrible B&O tax um, in the state that you're taxed on your, your goods and your equipment. I think that if we were to get rid of the B&O tax, that um, we wouldn't have to offer pilot programs because more people would want to come here and they wouldn't be taxed out the wazoo. Well, a couple things. B&O tax just for municipalities and not for the county as a whole. Uh, the other thing is this was part of those four things that the voters turned down. And you mentioned it had been better for uh, the uh, referendum, each four separate referendum, excuse me, uh, referendums on different times. Uh, but that's the way it's always done. Rarely do you have one amendment by itself. It's generally there are three or four amendments at one time. Uh, so, yeah, the problem with that, with those taxes, the property taxes, goes back to the voters. Oh, that it does. That, that does not really uh, get around the question I ask you. <laughs> How does Jefferson County act one way and speak another way and expect the businesses to come in? <sighs> that is, that's a, that's a, a tough question, and I'd like to believe that um, – if we were able to eliminate those taxes, that we would be able to convince larger companies to come in. Um, I know that when you th think of solar and you think of Rockwell, or even if you think of the Argos plant that's in Berkeley, uh, Berkeley County, um, it's all visual. And I think that with Rockwell, it was a, a matter of, oh, I don't think that I'm going to like the way that looks in my, in my neighborhood. Um, they have been nothing but responsible. They have been uh, diligent in making sure that, that they have fulfilled everything that they promised as far as um, air quality control. Um, I think that uh, if you were to find any anti-rock wooler as they're called now, that they probably would not be um, as adamant uh, to remove them because they're they're just kind of behind uh, they're behind the scenes now. They're just they're doing their business and they're they're in the community and they they participate. Um, and I think that if if we were to um, bring more companies that were willing to come here and give back um, and offer jobs. I mean, jobs is huge, and we don't have enough jobs for people to stay. I mean, we're a bedroom community, and, and we really we don't have to be. What kind of jobs would keep people in Jefferson County? And I think specifically about kids graduated from high school, graduated from college, who might like to stay, but the type of job a 22 or 23 year old wants isn't necessarily here. No, um, so I have a almost 20 year old, I have a 21 year old, and I have a 22 year old. So you're right in the market. So I'm in the market, and so my 20 year old right now is working at Sheets uh, because she's still trying to find herself. She is my, my, uh, my, I guess my. She's the one that I would always talk about when I had uh, when I was running for board of education and why I was running. It was a disaster. Um, so we'll leave we'll leave that one alone. Um, so my 21 year old is going to VMI and he's probably going to go into the military and then he'll maybe come back. I don't know. I would love to think that they they would come back. And then my 22-year-old works uh, as a manager in a restaurant in Shepherdstown. Mm -hmm. And uh, he loves it there, and his boss is great. Um, but yet again, it's a small business, and they have a hard time making it. I mean, there's just, there's just so much that you can do. Um, as far as businesses, I would, I mean, I would... Rockwell was great. My son used to work there, um, and he left. He got a burn on his leg, and he's like, okay, I'm not really into that. <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a bad burn. Mm. Um, so he was like, I'm done. Okay, fine. But things like Rockwell, they they earn a living wage. Sure. I mean, he's not earning a living wage right now because he's in the restaurant business. 
but companies like Rockwell they and Clorox and you know all of the other manufacturers around at least you are able to make a living wage somewhat so I think uh, Maria, uh, this would have to be a quick one because okay. we're actually over time right now all right then I'll I'll <laughs> I won't. All right. So, uh, Barbara, <laughs> your microphone minutes. for a minute. Take it and talk to our audience and tell them why they should vote for you in the 98. Well, I would appreciate your vote because um, I really want to go down to Charleston and work for you. I have the time. I have the means. Um, and I have no other reason to, to satisfy, uh, to, to go down other than to work for the people of Jefferson County. Uh, you know, I would appreciate everybody's vote. And if you want to hear about me, go to uh, my webpage, which is Fuller for the number, West Virginia, and you can find out whatever you need to find about me. Barbara, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks so much. Thank you. We appreciate it, Barbara Fuller in the 98th. And uh, up next,